Ladies and gentlemen, I am the Mark of the Masters, the man of the plan, Big Ray, here to stay to talk some GFW Impact Wrestling today, but not just GFW Impact Wrestling, 8-10-2017, ladies and gentlemen, but I'm going to also be giving you my Destination X 2017 predictions here at OneWrestling.com. Ladies and gentlemen, give me a follow at Big Ray Show. I want to thank the, the steady hand of OneWrestling.com, Carl the Cameraman, who is here every single week for me, for you, for all our viewing pleasure. Thank you, Carl, for all you do. Is that good? Is that good? I mean, you didn't pay me much, but... All right, I'll, I'll edit this whole part out. I'm not going to put over your stupid mustache. It is what it is. But I'm leaving this... I'm, I mean, I'm not leaving it. I'm going to edit this out. All right, anyway, uh, we're back, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, we open tonight's show with a backstage brawl between LAX and the Veterans of War. i got to be honest with you guys. LAX is poised to be a huge, huge, huge part of this uh, company's future. Now we have Low Key as part of the whole, uh, well, let's just say collaboration of very, very destructive individuals regarding... Uh, LAX, uh, the Latin American Exchange. Let me let me tell you something, guys. I do like this uh, <clears throat> this version of LAX. Still, I'm a little uh, confused as to why Homicide is freaking not wrestling. Why he's getting jobbed out? I have no idea. I mean, he's he's there as an enforcer, I guess, but uh, I don't know what's going on. So, this is what I did. I uh, I made an attempt to obtain the cell phone number of one homicide and uh, whether I do the interview here or if I do the interview over at Ben Hameen's uh, podcast channel which is uh, Hacker Hameen you can you know go to anywhere you uh, listen to your favorite audio content it's it's www.podbeam. or www.podbeam.com backslash Ben Hameen I do a pretty damn good Ben Hameen I'm just saying anyway I mean, I've been working with the guy for over two years now, so what are you going to do? All right, so here's the deal. <clears throat> we jump into the show, guys, and again, you know, you have, we have the whole backstage brawl, and then we have a, then we have the Unified Knockouts champion, who, by the way, uh, again, this week, Ben Hummy is not going to be with me on the Impact Attack, but uh, I have a good friend of mine, guys. His name is CEO Hayes. If you don't know who he is, guys, he is the, uh, the founder of WWPN. That's the, I think, the Worldwide Podcast Network or the World Wrestling Podcast Network. I'm going to look it up, guys, as, as I'm talking. But, um, but yeah, so basically he's going to be actually filling in for uh, that one of Ben Hameen over at the Impact Attack. So when you get the chance, guys, go over, over there and check it out. Now, again, we have the Unified Attack, and I'm trying to find this right. Oh, here we go. Uh, it's my boy CJ. He, he's known as CEO Hayes. And uh, I'm going to look at this. I'm going to look this up right now because I don't want to get this wrong. And I'm not going to edit this out because why? Because I don't have to. So it is the WWPN, the world, the wrestling world podcast network. And there you go. Like the Greeks. The Greeks. They invented wrestling. Anyway. <clears throat> the Unified Champ, Sienna, comes to the ring and she basically calls out Karen Jarrett. Gotta be honest with you guys, I really don't like seeing too much of her on TV. I mean, it's not that she's not a beautiful, gorgeous woman, but I, I just, the whole female authority figure thing, which I have no problem with female authority figures. Carl, shut up, Carl, all right? I know what the hell I'm saying. I'm doing here. Anyway, listen. What I'm saying is, Karen Jarrett as a character, not a big fan. Not, I'm, as a person, I'm sure she's freaking wonderful. Amazing to look at. All due respect, Mr. Jarrett. I'm just saying. I'm giving my honors opinion. That's what I do here. Anyway, she wants to know who the hell her opponent's going to be at Destination X. Karen Jarrett goes back and forth, and she says, look, you know, this person's a true professional. Anyway, Sienna's pretty pissed off because Sienna's like, look, I, who the hell is this person? All right, come on. I can, two weeks notice? There's no way anybody's going to be ready for me in two weeks. I'm the champ. The champ is here. Oh, no, she doesn't say that. Anyway, she does the whole finger thing, which she called out Charlotte Flair on. I'm, I'm going to get into that, guys, at the, uh, in the Impact Attack a little more. Interesting stuff coming out of Twitterverse. But anyway, long story short, Karen Jarrett calls out the one, the only... The Impact Wrestling, or I guess GFW, TNA, Hall, no, she's all of all of the above. Gail Kim. Gail Kim will be facing Sienna for the GFW Unified Championships. And from what I'm hearing, those title belts, the new ones, they're right around the corner. We're going to be seeing them very, very soon. So, that's going to be happening 
at happening, excuse me, at Destination X. Looking forward to that match. I think it's going to be quite the barn burner. Then we have backstage, we have Joseph Park, who is... Well, he's trying to prepare Grado for his match tonight, or their match tonight. It's going to be two-on-one handicap match. It's going to be Grado and Joseph Park versus the one and the only, Congo Kong. All right, so we have the Laredo Kid. Yes, Laredo Kid and Garza, Mr. Burrito himself, <laughs> versus El Hijo de Fantasma and Niamichi Marafuji. Every week, I think I'm getting it a little better. I'm just saying. And this is an international tag team match, whatever the hell that means. So listen, solid, solid damn match. I gotta be honest with you. We have, uh, we have a, we have this spot in the match where we have Laredo Kid, who takes everyone out with this huge Tower of Doom spot. It wasn't your typical, but uh, it was. You had to watch it, all right. It was a whole bunch of everything mixed in that whole Tower of Doom. Not too many. I, just check it out, guys. Ended up like it was like a famous or a leg leg drop mixed in with a with a power bomb and a whole bunch of good stuff. Really good. Uh, Marafuji hits uh, Phantasma. With a bunch of super, with some, excuse me, with a bunch of super kicks. Again, guys, fast-paced action. You know, me and Ben always discuss this. I always felt that you know, having a spot fest type match uh, kind of maybe sets the pace for the night. But I can't disagree with Ben, where he says you know he doesn't like the fact. And, and you know, and I've spoken to Bill Apto on, on this too. You know, the whole choreographed gimmick. Even though this match didn't feel as choreographed as last week's opening match, but you know, I understand where they're coming from when they when they say that. Uh, you know, you blow your wad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like you know, you're done. You get all the spots. You get all the spots in, and then you have nothing left for the rest of the match. I mean, for me, guys, I enjoy it. Maybe I would love to hear what you guys think. Leave your comments below at onewrestling.com. We have a little comment section down there, or one wrestling video here on YouTube. Whoa, we have a Laredo kid who connects with a Cradle DDT on Marafuji for near four. Marafuji hits a signature wraparound super kick, which actually looked really, really good. But there was a spot where I swear it was like kick. Try it again. Kick. Like it was like a half second delay between the time he slapped his leg. Inside terms, guys. That's what he does. Slaps his leg and kicks the guy in the face. These are little things, guys, because I super analyze these wrestling matches, guys. And I want to give you the full, you know, breakdown of what I feel. And, and those things, listen, I'm not criticizing it. Yes, I was trained by my dad. You know, I've never been, a, you know, a, a, a what do you call it, a consistent in-ring worker or whatever like that. Um, but I've watched enough wrestling to say that that was uh, very easy for me to pick out. But anyway, I'm sorry. I'm just nitpicking here. Uh, anyway, we have... Uh, so anyway, here's the super kick and followed by the uh, the sliced bread out of the corner to win the match. So very, I'm a little shocked. Uh, you know, the Laredo kid and uh, and Mr. Oh, by the way, there was a spot where you had Garza who wasn't going to. Uh, he was about to show the burrito, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about what he's hiding in his uh, in his trunks. And they stopped him from doing it, which I think is fantastic because every single match, this guy, all the, you know, his competitors always stop by, stop and wait until he freaking takes his pants off. Not me, I would have kicked you right in the balls and then punched you right in the face and then hit you with a chair and then maybe the ring bell and maybe I would have grabbed the kid's stuffed snake in the corner over there and maybe choked you out with it. Other than that, he ends up showing it anyway. But I was surprised to see Laredo Kid and Super Burrito, I mean uh, Garza, actually go uh, lose here. Um, you know, hey, I gotta be honest with you, Marafuji and Ijo the Fantasma made a pretty damn good team. And Ijo the Fantasma is a pretty big dude. Impressive. I remember his dad. His dad's, dad's really good. Alright, so we have a Grado and Joseph Park versus Congo Kong, two on one in the handicap match. And this was actually a fun match. Hey, listen, we had, we had, we had Park and, and Grado. They were working together, guys. And I gotta be honest, I was surprised that they took Congo Kong off his feet. Now, he probably says, oh, I don't like the big monster going off his feet. Hello, Joseph Park is like eight feet tall. 400,000 pounds. The guy's a big dude. Even though, I mean, you ever played football? You ever played sports with, with some lumbering kid that wasn't really good at sports? But yet when he ran into you, you felt like you ran into the side of the Chrysler building? Well, that is Joseph Park. And he, they knock him down. But they started celebrating a little too early. Congo Kong recovers and hits a double clothesline. And basically hits uh, Joseph Park in the corner with a huge cannibal. A lot of kind of cannonballs tonight. Just balls everywhere. Anyway, uh, a huge cannibal in the corner for the one, two, three. Now after the match, we have Congo Kong who wants to hit the huge splash, piling up Grado and uh, his buddy, uh, Mr. Esquire, Joseph Park, uh, his attorney, I guess. Anyway, he would need an attorney after this. Uh, maybe more of a coroner. But anyway, listen, gotta tell you, man, 
if he would have hit this, that being Congo Kong, the flying splash off the top rope onto a sandwiched tag team, it would have been a big problem. I got to be honest, a super big problem. These guys would have went to the hospital, but no. No, Laurel Van Ness, the beautiful, the gorgeous, the quite insane Laurel Van Ness comes down to the ring and saves the boys. Now, here we go. This is what... I, did you hear that? That's solid knuckle cracking. Anyway, here we go. Finally. 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 <coughs> How does he do that? <coughs> the Rock. <coughs> finally. I can't do that. Anyway. Finally. <coughs> this is legit. This is shoot coughing. Finally. Tyrus. Who for some reason has just been a bodyguard for the last freaking eight months. No in-ring action. Finally, he comes down to the ring and goes face-to-face -face with the man-beast, Congo Kong. And Brodus Clay, a.k.a. Tyrus, was a hell of a lot bigger than him. This is going to be King Kong versus... God this is going to be Godzilla versus Monster Zero. <coughs> Still coughing from the finally... Anybody got some Vaseline or anything? What? Anyway. Now we got a bunch of backstage segments. We have Mackenzie Mitchell backstage. She interviewing LAX. Trevor Lee and uh, and Loki. And, they, you know, they go over what's going to be happening in the main event, so on and so forth. And then she moves on to uh, to interview, you know, El Patron and the rest of the, the rest of the guys there also as well. Matt Seidel. Um, okay. That happened. Then we have Jeff Jarrett who debates uh, on whether uh, it was like a debate type sh type gimmick where it, it was a video package where talking about whether uh, Lashley should compete in professional wrestling and MMA or both. Uh, I got to be honest, if you're working for the WWE, I I don't think there's any way. No, there, no, there is no way that you can work full time for WWE and full time for let's say UFC or Bellator. No way. But with the schedule that you have for Impact Wrestling, it makes it. I'm not going to say it's easy. It makes it a little easier. The only problem is this. Sure, wrestling is scripted, but you will get hurt. I do not know a professional wrestler that has never been hurt. Even if they haven't had a major injury, the fact of the matter is that the wear and tear of being slammed on a mat, thrown into the turnbuckles, running the ropes, taking bumps, I mean, it just breaks you down. So I'm just saying, and... On top of that, Lashley is not the youngest guy, you know, the youngest chicken in the coop. He shouldn't call him a chicken. Rooster! Rooster in the coop! Because if he hears they call him a chicken, now I'm going to get punched in the face. But anyway. Then we have uh, Matt, uh, Matt Seidel. We have Dutch Mantel. Dirty Dutch Mantel. Who's here at OneWrestling.com? We did the whole conference thing. Conducting a sit-down interview with Lashley and uh, his opponent at uh, Destination X, Matt Seidel. You knew this was going to happen. Uh, you know, they're going back and forth, verbal verbal uh, <clears throat> barbs at each other. And, uh, well, Lashley grabs Idel around the throat. But then security, they break it up. I don't know how the hell that's possible. I don't know who could stop Bobby Lashley. But anyway, favorite match of the night, we have the Unified Tag Team Champions, LAX, Santana, and Ortiz with... Conan Homicide, Diamante, Loki, uh, the guy that's selling popcorn, the hot dog stand guy, um, some dude that was selling magazines, and the t-shirts outside the arena. They were all in the corner of uh, LAX. And uh, they were facing the Veterans of War, Wilcox and Mayweather, in a street fight for the Unified Tag Team Championship. And I knew this w would not freaking go well. We have a point in the match. We have the Veterans of War sending Ortiz through a table but homicide pulls the referee out of the ring during the pin attempt and we have diamante who distracts mayweather allowing santana to drop chick drop chick drop chick ha <laughs> ha that's what a chick does when she throws a drop kick a uh, drop kick chair to the face loki then handcuffs mayweather and the you know a lot of wrestlers get handcuffed i would just carry like a pair of handcuff uh keys in my boots like all the time every freaking time because if this, if this ever happens there you go you got the keys there but anyway they handcuffed Mayweather, uh, formerly Crimson, to the freaking corner, and they beat the living crap out of this guy. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about, they didn't just beat him. They beat him unmercifully with a kendo stick. Um, they hit him with uh, they hit him with the hot dog guy. Uh, they hit him with the hot dog. Uh, they hit him with everything they had, man. The kitchen sink included. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm serious. They really beat the living crap out of this guy. And also his tag team partner. We have Wilcox with Santana with a big Samoan drop for a near fall, but then finally LAX was too much because it's basically two on one, or should I say 56 on one. It was an old match. Uh, 
LAX finally uh, double teaming. Uh, they it was just a barrage of double team moves on uh, on Wilcox along with, uh, with weapons and stuff, and they finally put him through a table in the corner, which uh, which looked kind of dangerous to be honest with you, and and they pinned him for the win one two three. I gotta tell you, man, that was tough to watch. <clears throat> and I went over the fact that backstage, El Patron, Sanjay Dutt, and Matt Seidel were interviewed backstage. Now, this was a match I was really, really interested to see. And listen, guys, I have called it from the very, very, very beginning. Uh, I do feel that uh, my man Desmond Xavier, Desmond Xavier, is going to be winning the uh, Super X Cup. Uh, I think this kid has all the potential in the world. I think this kid is this kid is the truth. But this match is not with Desmond Xavier. It's ACH versus Taiji Ishimuri or Ishimuri, depending on how you want to pronounce that. And this was a damn good match. And let me ask you a question: Why does Ishimuri wear a T-shirt when the kid took the T-shirt off? I, let me tell you something. I would go to work without a T-shirt if I had that kid's build. I'm being straight up with you right now. I mean, the kid is built like a brick house. I don't know what the hell the kid's wearing a shirt for. I just I go to church with just a tie and no shirt on. Just saying. We're gonna fast forward to the match. We have Ishimuri with a super kick to ACH, but ACH comes right back at him with a huge clothesline. Ishimuri connects with a double knees, followed by a beautiful 450 splash to win in advance to the finals. I gotta be honest with you guys, this was a well-paced match, very solid, good match. Uh, there was a little spot here and there that was a little. Uh, Let's just say uh, sloppy, but not from the Japanese wrestling. I'm talking about from ACH. And ACH, I don't know if they're going to sign. I don't know if he signed long-term with, with Impact Wrestling. I'm going to look, have to look into that. But, you know, the guy is charismatic. The guy has a lot of skill, and the guy can wrestle. So, <laughs> sign him. Uh, I would. I would definitely sign him, you know. I mean, allow him to also work the indies. But, I mean, the guy's fantastic. And <clears throat> Ishimuri really uh, impressed me. Uh, he, he's been impressive. I think the guy's really great. But, uh, but yeah, man, I'm looking forward to this to this main event, and I'm going to give you my idea, my breakdown at the end of this. Listen, when I'm done with Impact, I'm going to give you my, my, uh, my breakdown and my predictions on who, I, who you think or who I think. Now you. You can tell me who you think in the, in the message box below down here at One Wrestling Video. But who you think, uh, again, I use with the who you, with who I think will take the trophy. Now, I, I'm, I'm curious. Like a late period. Did that work? Did that work, Carl? I didn't think so. Anyway, if it's a cup, or if they're fighting for the X cup, shouldn't the trophy kind of like a cup? Not like a coffee cup, maybe like a, like a small Stanley cup. I swear to God, that trophy that they're using, I think I won that thing at a karate tournament when I was like four. Impact not really spending a lot of money on trophies, just saying. Hopefully their belts are not made of cardboard and aluminum foil. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> backstage Tyrus calls himself the only, the one and only bully in town. And he wants Congo Kong. Now, Congo Kong has nothing on him. Yo, dude, that's going to be a real good match. Karen Jarrett, more Karen Jarrett. And Bruce Pritchard backstage. As a matter of fact, he was on uh, Facebook Live the other day. I like the fact that, that they're doing this. I like the outreach to the fans. Good good stuff. Bruce Pritchard, if you're listening to this, Mr. Pritchard, please leave the goatee and the mustache. You look really cool. F leave the glasses. I would wear tinted glasses if I were you. Really cool, man. Good look. I like it. Anyway, he was on Facebook Live. It was pretty cool. He answered like five of my questions. I have like five accounts. <laughs> anyway, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um... Yeah, well, anyway, they were, they were arguing backstage, and uh, Dutch Mantel notes that uh, this isn't good. Like, this isn't a good thing. You know, there's just too much dissension backstage, and we all know that Bruce has and will make a special announcement next week. I'm really looking forward to seeing what the special announcement is. I, I think this is live, so there are no spoilers out there. And by the way, guys, stop reading the spoilers. <coughs> Excuse me. Worst thing in the world. Anyway, we're going to go to the main event of the evening. We have Trevor Lee, the Carolina Caveman, low-key, Mr. Low-key, and uh, Walking Armageddon, a.k.a. Bobby Lashley, versus X Division Champion Sunjay Dutt, but actually Trevor Lee's walking around with the belt, uh, Matt Seidel, the Unified World Tag Team, uh, World Tag Team, Unified World Champion, Alberto, Alberto Del Rio. Oh, I'm sorry, El Patron. I'm so used to calling him Del Rio. And I have to call Bobby, not Booby, Bobby, Bobby, Bobby Lashley, Booby. Anyway, Booby. 
So, booby. Anyway, El Patron and Low Key. We're going to jump right into the match. And they start the match with a crazy brawl. Uh, El Patron and Low Key brawl to get the match started. And El Patron is looking for revenge after Low Key basically, well, sunned him last week on Impact Wrestling. If you don't know what being sunned means, it means when he basically takes your manhood. Lashley then picks up Dutt for a pin attempt. It connects with a huge dominate. We're going to fast forward. We have Sanjay Dutt who hits Lee with a tornado DDT and tags in El Patron. Every time I talk about El Patron, I have to talk like this because he is the champion. El Campeon. By the way, Loki cut a promo early in the evening. <clears throat> I forgot that he was Spanish. <laughs> he spoke great Spanish. Loki. Primo. Just saying. Okay, so uh, Sanjay Dutt takes out Lashley on the apron with an insecurity kick followed by a suicide dive. We fast forward even even further, and Lashley catches Sanjay Dutt midair as uh, he takes a huge power. So why am I doing this? I don't know why. I just have a lot of energy. I just drank some Café Bustelo, and that is some strong coffee, my friends. But anyway, Loki follows up with the Warrior's Way for the one, two, three. So ladies and gentlemen, the heels go over strong here. In a really damn good match. Listen, guys, GFW this week was really solid, really good match. Good match to start, good match to end, and some good stuff in the middle. So it was a delicious pro wrestling sandwich. And next week, ladies and gentlemen, is D it is uh, GFW Destination X. Bobby Lashley versus. You know what? Let me just run through the matches really quickly right now. Why don't we just do that? Would you, Carl? You gonna work a little overtime? What? Okay. Didn't know you used to have sex with my mother. <clears throat> anyway. So let's jump into the match card. It's going to be taking place in Orlando Universal Studios. The best place to watch wrestling. Your camera didn't freeze. <sighs> I've watched Impact Wrestling in the Manhattan Center. And that's the place to be. I'm telling you right now. We'll go down south or something. I, I swear. Oh, wait. Florida is down south. Anyway, all right, so we have the GFW Unified Knockouts Championship match between Sienna and Gail Kim. And we all know that Gail Kim is looking to take the title, but guess what? I don't think she does. I think Sienna goes over. I think Sienna gets some help from KM. We didn't see KM this week. I think uh, I think Gail Kim will win the title at Bound for Glory, at the, the granddaddy of them all when it comes to uh, Impact Wrestling. And uh, I don't think, I think Gail Kim comes up short, to be honest with you. Uh, Sienna, Sienna's a powerful, powerful woman. She's lost a lot of weight. She's gotten into really great shape. Um, she's doing the whole heel gimmick really, really good. Uh, again, KM is lurking. I don't see him having a match on the card. Hmm. So I have a good feeling that KM's going to actually interfere with this match. And maybe even some male-on-female uh, violence? Does that happen in wrestling anymore? I guess so. So, Sienna retains the title, in my opinion, versus Gail Kim. I think they're going to wait. The chase is always greater than the actual victory. And Gail Kim will probably retire at Bomb for Glory as the GFW Women's Knockouts Champion, whatever they're going to call it. Bobby Lashley at versus, uh, we have Bobby Lashley versus uh, Matt Seidel for number one contendership for the GFW Championship of their, for GFW Championship of their choosing. Hmm. This is a tough one to pick. And you're going to say, that. what are you talking about? Bobby Lashley? No. <clears throat> because I know they're pushing Matt Seidel. And um, I'm thinking, <sighs> this is going to be tough, man. I have two lines of thinking here. I, 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 number one, I don't want to stooge off who I think is going to win the main event. But I think it's there's a good chance Matt Seidel wins this match. Um, I don't know how. But I know that they've been really, really... Uh, pushing Matt Seidel to be kind of the new version of AJ Styles. What AJ Styles was for uh, TNA back in the day, that's what I believe uh, they're trying to get Matt Seidel to be now. With all that being said, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's really tough to pick against Bobby Lashley to be in the main event picture. And I always think that even if Bobby Lashley loses this match, he can still be in the main event picture, still earn his way in there. <clears throat> so... Man, this is t you know what? I'm gonna go on a freaking ledge, ledge, ledge on a ledge. I don't know how he's gonna do it, but I'm gonna say Matt Seidel goes over Bobby Lashley. Uh, 
I don't know if it's going to be necessarily clean. He's a baby face. Man, I don't know, man. This is going to be tough. You know what, man? I'm going to say, yep, Matt Seidel goes over Bobby Lashley. I know I'm thinking this through. It's not good uh, radio or video or whatever the hell you're watching. But uh, the fact of the matter is that I just think they're going to be pushing Matt Seidel uh, for that championship match. It's tough, man. I really... Part of me is telling me, see, my head is telling me Bobby Lashley's going to win, but my heart is telling me Matt Seidel. What do I go with, guys? What do you think? <clears throat> Should I flip it? Should I change it? Matt Seidel goes over. <clears throat> okay. We have Taiji Ishimori versus Desmond Xavier. Listen, for the Super X Cup, <clears throat> no, Super X Trophy tournament, it's not an X Cup. It's not a cup. I'm sorry. It's not a cup. I'd rather have them have like a gold cup that you drink coffee out of than have that freaking trophy. Again, my opinion. I will go to the living room right now and show you one of the trophies. It's the same damn thing. And I have plenty of trophies. I swear. Amazing amount. About three. Anyway. <clears throat> I've been saying this from the beginning. <clears throat> Ishimori is going to put... Ishimori and Desmond Xavier, this match is going to steal the night. Uh, if they have it in the match card where I think they're going to have it somewhere in the middle, I think this is going to be perfect. But the fact of the matter is that I believe Desmond Xavier will be your new Impact Wrestling GFW <clears throat> X Division Champion eventually. So I think he's gonna he's gonna win. He's gonna win this match, and it's gonna be a beautiful match, guys. I think if there was any match you would want to tune in, if you guys are pure fans of the lucha style, pure fans of that uh, that high flying style, this is the match to watch. And um, again, Ichimuri, Ichimuri, you don't have to wear a shirt, buddy. Don't be so, you know, self-conscious. Anyway, we have the X Division Championship match, a ladder match, Sanjay Dutt versus Trevor Lee. And guess what, guys? Guess freaking what? Uh, since Desmond Xavier, in my opinion, is going to win this match, a babyface, I think Trevor Lee finally takes the X Division title legitimately from Sanjay Dutt. I don't know how he does it. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a great match. Uh, Sanjay Dutt, not... Uh, he's great. I mean, great wrestler. I just... He never did it for me. I mean, not that I'm not attracted to him. I think he's a very attractive male. Uh, I, I just can see all the messages down there. And Carl's giving me that weird look. And oiling up his mustache, which is making me extremely uncomfortable. Anyway, Carl, stop that. Sanjay Dutt uh officially drops the title to Trevor Lee and they're gonna they're gonna continue this uh this feud probably for another week or two and then it's gonna be over and Desmond Xavier's gonna move into that spot against Trevor Lee and that's gonna be awesome. That's gonna I think that's gonna be the bound for glory X Division title match. And I think Sanjay Dutt's gonna be they're, gonna, they're probably gonna have Ultimate X. That's gonna be awesome. So yeah man, so we're gonna have and I don't know why they didn't just do it Ultimate X match here. But anyway, maybe they're, maybe they're saving for Bound for Glory. Uh, so yeah, man. So we have Sanjay Dutt going to drop the title officially to Trevor Lee, and now Trevor Lee won't have to wear the belt uh, the entire match, which he did, by the way, during Impact this week. And anyway, last but not least, we have the GFW World Heavyweight Champion Alberto El Patron. El Patron Alberto Teorio. Listen. All right, I don't know how they're doing this. Okay. Um, we all know that, that Del Rio or El Patron, Alberto Del Rio, whatever you want to call him, Alberto El Patron, was suspended by the company. The, whatever the hell they did editing-wise to actually kind of move him into, uh, you know, keep him on TV up to the point where we get to this pay-per-view was impressive. But with all that being said, um, I said for the longest time already, and if you guys don't believe me, guys, go back, check out some of my older <clears throat> reviews here at OneWrestling.com, go to the Impact Attack podcast, and check it out. Uh, I've been saying this for weeks, LAX is going to hold every single major title in that company, every title, and eventually they're going to have the X Division title, and that's the title that I want freaking Homicide to win. Whether it happens, I don't know. But that's what they're planning to do. I think that's what they're going to do. This year, <clears throat> the end of this year, when December comes... I, I will predict that LAX will be the like mo like one of the most powerful factions in wrestling. All right, I'm serious in all pro wrestling. I mean, these guys are gonna have all the titles. They're gonna be super over. I mean, just nasty, evil. I'm gonna kill you and your mother. Heels. You know what I'm saying? And this is what pro wrestling needs. You need heels like that. Conan. What you see is what you get. That is Conan. With all that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I think the numbers game will also take effect here, and I think. Uh, even though El Patron will have his brother. Oh, my God. 
I just had an epiphany. What are the chances that Alberto's brother, El Hijo de Dos Caras, was always part of uh, LAX? What if he turns on his own brother? That would be a really good feud to move forward. Mm. So now we have the baby face Matt Seidel who will be challenging the heel low key for the world heavyweight championship and we have brother versus brother maybe with dad as the referee oh my god oh my god Joey Styles oh I want to I know what you guys think about that idea I don't have any inside info on this guys I don't like doing that it's going to be awesome. But listen, ladies and gentlemen, I always say this. I would do this for a living, but if I couldn't, I'd do it anyway. Why? Because I love talking wrestling. I'm like the Micro Machines guy. If you guys don't know who it is, go to YouTube. I'll say it again slower. Ladies and gentlemen, I always say this. I would do this for a living. But if I couldn't, I'd do it anyway. Why? Because I love talking wrestling. And I love talking wrestling with you guys here at OneWrestling.com every single Friday afternoon or morning. Hopefully morning. Right now, it's, it's going to be the afternoon very soon. So I'm going to have to you know, put this up as soon as possible. But guys, it has been a pleasure, and look out for the Impact Attack, and listen, check it out guys, go to my Instagram guys, follow me at Big Ray Show, follow me on Twitter at Big Ray Show, follow Bill Apter at After One Wrestling, follow the Big Slam Nation team at Big Slam Nation, and us as a family here at One Wrestling, also on Twitter, on Facebook, everywhere, anywhere, listen, go to my Instagram, uh, I put up a, uh, a thumbnail, and uh, basically the Pro Wrestling Reflection Podcast, yes, the Pro Wrestling or the Pro Wrestling Ref Reflection Podcast. That's PWRP. Hashtag that. And uh, we're going to start this week, man. It's going to be me, Travis Voltz, and the professor over at Hacker Hameen. And we're going to be reviewing all old school stuff with kind of a modern day twist. Uh, old school review uh, with a new mind or new eye for what we what we saw back in the day. And, uh, you know, I, I put up a Twitter poll. And just by the narrowest of margins, it was actually between four. It was between uh, uh, WrestleMania 1, Starcade 85, uh, Super Clash 83 or 85, I can't remember. Super Clash 85, I think. Anyway, and um, SummerSlam 88, and I figured SummerSlam's right around the corner. But no, ladies and gentlemen, it was between WrestleMania 1 and the NWA, uh, and WrestleMania 1 by the very narrowest, I think by like two votes. So we're going to be reviewing WrestleMania 1 or WrestleMania 1 uh, over at Hacker Hameen. And uh, don't forget, go to www prowrestlingtees.com backslash bin hameen y'all uh, for your t-shirts there ladies and gentlemen also Bill After has, an, uh, has a store there as well also my brother OK Fabe has a store maybe I need a store would anybody buy a big red t-shirt probably not I mean what, what would I put over the mark of the masses hey whatever not gonna do it alright guys so thank you for joining me here at onewrestling.com I'll see you next week ladies and gentlemen thank you for joining me for your impact wrestling report and your Destination X, well, prediction show. Guys, see you next week. Peace.